This is my Orbea Orca M Limited, and it might not be a familiar sight to you as yet, because I only managed to get my dirty little hands on it at the beginning of December. But in that time, I have racked up a number of hours in the saddle, and it must be said, I think there's something of a romance. Burgeoning. The previous version of the Orca that I'd had was actually the first real proper time I'd ever spent on an Orbea. And I discovered very quickly that it was probably one of the sweetest handling bikes I had ever ridden. And so when I saw the new Orca that was at the Tour de France under cofferdist rider Geoffroy Soup in that very cool prototype colour scheme, I was incredibly excited. Now at the time they told us that they'd made the bike lighter, which they have. They told us that they'd made it stiffer, which apparently they also have. They told us that they'd made it more aerodynamic, which we can't test for, but certainly you can see that it looks it, the fact that they've optimised the top of the seat tube there and also the head tube and the way the forks bow out. They've called it free flow and it mimics their time trial bike. But one thing had me slightly concerned because they said that they'd altered the geometry slightly therefore potentially altering the handling characteristics. So alarm bells rang, but fortunately, despite all the changes that they've made, it is in fact an even better handling bike. So clearly the guys at Orbea kind of know what they're doing when it comes to making bikes ride well. In terms of the weight loss, the frame actually saves about 80 grams over the previous version, which is not to be sniffed at because it now comes under 800 grams for the frame. Now the way they've done it apparently is by modifying their manufacturing process. So effectively, that they have refined all the pieces of carbon and the way it goes into the mold so that there is just enough overlap to make the frame what it is, but with no wastage. And then also they've altered the layup because it is effectively a completely new design. The group set, as you'll see, is SRAM's Red Mechanical. Now I do have the luxury of having SRAM's ETAB on one of my other bikes. And going back to mechanical, it's certainly not much of a come down at all, although there is a slight one. But one of the things that offsets it is the fact that the mechanical group set is still fractionally lighter than ETAB. And lightweight is one thing that I was really thinking about when this bike was put together. One of the really nice touches that I do appreciate on this bike, and I'm not entirely sure whether it's a SRAM standard thing or whether it's the fact that this bike is assembled by hand in the Basque Country, which is a pretty wet part of the world, but it has fully sealed cables. Look at that. That is something of a luxury, I'm not gonna lie. Now, in terms of the numbers on this group set, we've got an 11 to 28 cassette, pretty standard. The chain ring sizes, well, they're 50, 34, which is not exactly my favorite, and I will be changing it to uh, my standard 52, 39. There is one deviation from the full SRAM Red group set, and that is the FSA K-Force light cranks. And that is because I've used those in order to get my power to max power meter on there. Other modifications I've made to this bike already mainly revolve around the position. So I've put a 110 millimeter stem on there as opposed to a 100 millimeter stem. And then I've also changed the saddle. So I've got my favorite physique Arione on there. And I also managed to find one that really match the bike. I'm quite chuffed about that, it has to be said. Other dimensions, so the handlebars are relatively narrow, 42 centimetre wide bars. And I say they're relatively narrow because FSA's bars somehow always come up a little bit on the narrower side, but those are absolutely perfect here. They're also exceedingly compact, as you'll see. And so I've got around that fact by putting the levers quite far out the front, which I wouldn't normally do, but on this bike, it feels absolutely right. And it also means that the position over to my other bikes is completely seamless. So I did like that. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that from a mechanical video, I said that I was gonna cut the steerer tube so that the stem would lie flush. I was com gonna completely slam it. And there is now a five mil spacer under there. So yes, it, it must be said that I didn't heed my own advice, but when you're completely set in your position, it's the logical thing to do. Uh, and actually my position wasn't completely fixed at the time of cutting my steering tube, but fortunately I've managed to get away with it. So there we go, happy days. Position now completely dialed. You'll see all the finishing kit on this bike is from FSA's range. So I've got a K-Force light seat post on there, the OS99 stem, and then the extra light bars. Also from the FSA stable are these Vision Metron 40 wheels. The first time I got to ride an Orbea Orca, the new version anyway, it had the super shallow Metron wheels because it was the lightest bike I've ever ridden. But for everyday riding, 
and I do say that knowing full well how lucky I am to consider a carbon wheel set for everyday riding. But hear me out, I would go for the Metron 40 because it is a little bit more aerodynamic and I'm more than happy to put up with the ever so slight weight penalty. Tires on this are 23C wide. The reason I've kept them on for the moment is because actually they measure up far wider. And I've actually got my calipers out to prove it. These measure 24.89 millimeters wide. So that is pretty big for a 23C tire. Therefore, they are still on this bike. And to be fair, it doesn't really need much help in the comfort stakes because as well as increasing the stiffness of the bike, reducing the weight and so forth, they have also increased the compliance apparently. And that is pretty noticeable. It is a comfy bike. I've mentioned a few times that this bike is lightweight. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Water bottle already off, by the way. Every gram counts. Ready? Well, I can't get an exact figure because my arms are shaking so much because they're so puny, but that to my mind looks like it's almost exactly seven kilos, which is pretty darn impressive when you consider that that's with GPS mount and that is with a power meter as well. And it's not a small bike. Yeah, that is lightweight. Now there has only been one slight downer to this bike so far, and that is that since I've had it, I've not been at my fittest. So unfortunately, this poor bike has not really been ridden quite as fast as perhaps it deserves to have done. Despite the fact that, it, as you've just seen, it's incredibly lightweight, it hasn't really been going up climbs as fast as it might. But hopefully, that will change as the year progresses. And I've got a power meter on there now as well, so I can certainly use it and train properly with it. Undoubtedly, this is a bike that you will see plenty more of on the channel in the coming months. To make sure you don't miss any of that content, do subscribe to GCN, it is completely free. And if now you are craving some more Orbea content, then if you click just up there, you get through to a video where I was fortunate enough to ride in the Basque Country on a retro heritage Orbea and compare just how fast it was next to a modern one. Or to see my other pro bike here on GCN, or my presenter bike, should I say, my Canyon Aeroad, you can get through to it just down there.